Welcome to Entrepreneur's Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, the podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. All right, we're live. Chuck, what's your laptop? Did you get a new Windows machine or? Nope, it's a MacBook Pro. Oh, you switched back. Wait. I did. Yeah, you had a Windows machine for a while, right? My my uh, desktop machine in my office that's connected to three of my monitors is a Windows machine. Okay. Ah, okay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not. I might install like uh, Ubuntu Linux or something on it. Okay. I don't know. There are things I like about it and things I don't, but did anyway. Did you get a brand new MacBook? I did, as a matter of fact. Um, what happened was last Tuesday, um, my old MacBook Pro just quit working. Just oh, nice! It wouldn't even <laughs> it wouldn't turn on. Like I'd plug the the MagSafe onto it, and it yeah. would turn orange for a while, and then it turned green because it was all charged up. Okay, but it wouldn't turn on. Nothing nice. I did would make it turn on. So I did a bunch of Google searches and tried all the key combinations. And did you try the sexy voice? <laughs> Come on, baby. No, I didn't. Um, anyway, so uh, I took it into the Mac repair place over here. and uh, Did he try the sexy voice? <laughs> <laughs> nope, he didn't. Apparently, that's not in their documentation. So, anyway, he couldn't get it turned on, so they took it into the repair shop, and then they called me and said, basically said... Um, we can't get it to turn on and we can't repair it because it's missing some brackets to hold the logic board in place or hold one of the cables on the logic board or something. Okay. And I'm like, okay. They're like, yeah. So somebody opened it up and, you know, didn't put it back together properly. And I looked at him and I said, well, I got it refurbished from Apple and you're <laughs> the only, only other people who have opened it up. So, uh, nice. And, and they looked at me and they basically said, well, there's nothing we can do. So, I have a really nice paperweight in the chair behind me. Sweet. And uh, they did uh, pull all the data off of it, and put it on a hard drive for me. So you could probably yeah. get like almost full price for that on on eBay. It's ridiculous. Like you think so? Well, I'm I'm kidding, but you could still probably get a couple hundred bucks for it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. It. Yeah, I, would I just go need for to use the hard drive out because I don't want to give people my data. But like, yeah, like a th it's funny because like a two or three year old MacBook Pro will go for like a couple hundred, like a hundred or a couple hundred bucks less than a new one. Oh, really? So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty. This one's an o uh, thirteen, going. an o twenty o thirteen. So you could also like email or call Apple support if you want to deal with the hassle and be like, hey, you sell you sold me a refurbished MacBook, but you it was missing parts inside. So yeah, but I've had it for two years, so I don't know if they'll. Well, like if the, years, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's there's no like um, there's no like statute of limitations on like fraud. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, well, I, I mean, there is one on fraud, yeah. but I mean, like, like if you sell someone some shit that that is mm -hmm. not what they paid for, like, there, there, you can't be like, well, your warranty is up. Yeah. So, well, I I basically told them I at the at this repair place because I've taken it into them before and they didn't say anything to me. Oh, so okay. I basically, I basically said, you know, I'm going to trash you on the internet, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I, I just told him straight up. I'm like, nobody else has opened it but you. So, you yeah, know, I'm just going to let people know, hey, if you're in Utah and you're going to have your <laughs> Mac worked on, drive it to the Apple store in Salt Lake instead of taking it to Simply Mac in Orem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because those guys are geniuses and will mess your Mac up, and then when it dies and the logic board's no good anymore, they'll tell you that they can't fix it and that they called Apple, and Apple told them that, that they couldn't fix it. So, anyway. Because, yeah, yeah, it sounds like some kind of bullshit excuse. Oh, oh but... it gets better. This week was a complete disaster. <laughs> um, uh, Wednesday, I got rear-ended, taking my kids home from school. Oh, oh no. And uh, so the, there's good news and bad news. The good news is is that the the rear bumper cover, what most people call the bumper, the, the plastic part, not the metal part. 
Yeah. Right. Um, it it had a chunk missing off of it because I had um, I had done a donut in the middle of the highway and hit the, the <laughs> barrier rail about a year and a half ago. And uh, I'm not riding with you anywhere anywhere, Chuck. But but it it wore, it it was still fine, you know. Anyway, <laughs> this this kid ran into the back of the car and he totally messed it up. So it looks like Geico is going to be buying me a new bumper. Cool. Um, I've been wanting to replace it for a while, but now I don't have to, or I don't have to pay for it. Um, and then, but yeah, I had a little bit of back pain yesterday. Been fine today, so no big deal. Um, and then, man, something else died. There was something else that went wrong. Oh, my internet went out yesterday, and my awesome computer, my Windows machine, for some reason, it times out getting any kind of connection. So if it manages not to time out when doing the DNS request, it'll time out uh, contacting the server of whatever I want to talk to, which is why I'm on my laptop, because I didn't know if it would even work. So, <laughs> <clears throat> And then the MacBook Pro, turns out that it it's re really conveniently won't uh, pick up that these Apple ear pods are plugged into it, unless they're plugged into it when it boots up. It you just works. If you just get everything Apple, it just works. Yeah, it just works, except you, you have to jump through some hoops. So. Except when it doesn't, then there's no way to troubleshoot it at all, because no, it's magic. Because magic is not troubleshootable. <laughs> That's right. You can't debug magic. <laughs> so anyway, it's been, it's been a week. But uh, yes. at this point, I'm just trying to finish things up for the being able to add the banners and ad reads and stuff to the new uh, system. And then once that's all working, then um, I'm going to add everything in. I also need to set it up so I can give credits to past sponsors because I'm going to reach out to all of them. Um, oh, yeah. I've got a couple of things i got to make right with people. <clears throat> but if I can get that, that done and get all the emails out today, then I can just, you know, I'll just let them know, hey, look, you know, um, feel free to try it out this weekend and, you know, I'll be back on Monday if there's any problem. Just let them know it's a beta system, but um, you know they they get the benefit of trying it out, and they get the benefit of some free ad space. So That's anyway, great. but man, yeah, I was planning on doing a lot of the work on this stuff on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and it you know uh, my internet went out, and then you know, and and I've just been pushing so hard these last few weeks to get through this stuff. That I mean, at nine o'clock last night, I just went to bed. I was just, I was completely wiped out. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling better now because I slept for like ten hours. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's been nuts. So, um, I really do need to finish it up. My wife and I are uh, taking off for the weekend. Um, when she picks up the kids from school, she's literally going from the school to her sister's house, which is about forty-five minutes away. To drop them off and then coming back and picking me up and we're we're taking off for the weekend. It's gonna rob a few banks and head to Mexico. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like and, send and the kids we'll, a postcard. Like. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> when we're done, we'll pick up the kids on Monday. But <laughs> yeah, so I need to get it done before we take off this evening. So nice. But yeah, I, I kind of need the break, and I I would really like to get at least this much of it done because if I have that much of it done. Then I can just kind of drop new features in as I go. Yeah. And then I, I was talking to one of my neighbors at the uh, Halloween party at the church. And you have to realize that in Utah, Mormon congregations, uh, depending on where you live, but since most of my neighborhood is Mormon, um, our congregation literally encompasses about four or five square blocks. So when I was talking to my neighbor, he lives down the street from me, but most of the people in the congregation at church live down the street from me. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, we were chatting, and he pretty much talked me into hiring somebody. So I'm going to go through that whole uh, hassle again. But I think I'm going to be gunning for hiring some college student who wants to work 20 hours a week from home. And then I'll just buy him lunch once a month. You know, So we'll just meet, meet over lunch, make sure everything's good. Um, and then I'm just going gonna, gonna to go heavy on the accountability. I think that's been my weakness though, on, on all the rest of this so that I know exactly what they're doing. And that way they can manually handle what this system set up to handle. And then as I clear something else off their plate, then they can take on another thing. 
but I'm yep. looking for somebody 10 to 20 hours a week. I don't really need a ton, but if I have somebody doing that, then they can help manage the sponsorship stuff that I don't want to do, like putting banner ads up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they can also handle a lot of the stuff with the conferences so that I essentially don't have to organize the whole conference, right? Um, they can get into the system, or you guys know Blue Tick. They can get into Blue Tick and they can send out the invitations from my email address using a template that we wrote together. And then they can do all, all the follow up. Yep. Yep. And so, um, you know, all that stuff, we can get it all hammered out. They can put all the information on the website, and I really just don't have to do a lot of it. But then I have like three other things that I've been trying to deliver on that basically it's just a matter of uploading stuff to the right place and then posting it in the right place on the internet. And so I figure I can get somebody to do that much of it too. So anywho, yeah. that's that's kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, write down all those things so that you've got a pretty good list of all the activities, all the things you want them to do before you go and hire someone yep. so that you know and you can give them a test for some of the that activity. Mm-hmm. And yep. then, uh, yeah, then you'll be able to hold them more accountable too. If you have like actual, you know, this is what yep. your your work entails. Yeah, yeah. D- but did you I mean, um, did you have you seen Rodrigo's weekly reports? Yeah, John. Uh, John sent me a copy of that. Okay. And yeah, that was ultimately it's John's fault. That was ultimately why I fired uh, Gerald, is because yep. I asked for that like three weeks in a row and he didn't get me one. And yeah, so that's like, perfectly. Yeah, I was You're like, Bye. and then and then he. <laughs> He got back to me on Skype, and he's like, is there any way that you'll hire me back? And I basically said, no, not at this point. Right. Yeah. So, but at this point, I kind of want somebody that I can, you know, if I can get somebody local, I think I'd be happier that way, even though they're going to be working remotely 99.9% of the mm-hmm. time. Right, yeah. And, I mean, University of Utah is 40 minutes away. BYU is uh, 25 minutes away. University... Uh, Utah Valley University's 15 minutes away. Um, there are a whole bunch of smaller colleges in between all of those. So I should be able to find some student that just wants a part-time job that can get a lot of this done, can write up some standard operating procedures for me, and won't get pissed off like Mandy did when I tell her that I want her to document what she's doing so that I can optimize it because they won't feel like they're giving up job security or that I'm looking to hire somebody cheaper they're going to be happy to do it because they don't want to be my VA at 10 bucks an hour for the rest of their life. And so right. the better they do with this stuff, the happier they're going to be. And the happier I am, the happier they are. So, you know, if they can document this stuff and then I can codify it in some way so that either somebody else can do it or so that eventually it gets worked into pod wrench, which is what my podcast system is called at this point. Um, then, then yeah, you know, then they're happy and I'm happy. And, you know, they're not, they, they're not worried about uh, putting themselves out of a job. Because the other thing, and I don't think um, Mandy understood this, and that is that um, I had a ton more stuff that I wanted or needed done. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, by eliminating all of the low-value stuff, I would have been happy to continue to pay her. And, in fact, depending on which higher-value stuff we got to, um, you know that because the low value stuff it had to be done, so that's why that's why she was doing low value stuff. But if we could have eliminated all that stuff and had her doing higher value, higher ROI stuff, I probably would have been happy to pay her more. Yeah, right. So, well, exactly. that's the thing. Yeah, you can never work yourself out of a job. That's like so many people have this wrong conception. Like because if you become unneeded, unnecessary, you've just become the most valuable person at that <laughs> company, right? Someone who is able to make themselves unnecessary, whether it be through automating their job or like, you know, man- getting other people to do their job is the most ex- valuable person yeah. in the company. You you have just created for yourself the, like the perfect consultant job. Right, yeah. I mean, honestly, because if you can come in and take all of my expensive processes and make it right. so that I don't actually have to have a person crank in the crank, you know, go do that in another company. They'll pay you a ton of money for it. Well, even even in the same company. I mean, if you have yeah. someone that does that, are you going to say, yeah, okay, go well, it's over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. You're going to just find the next thing, the next yep. le- level up for them to do it again to grow. I mean, 
So, yep. yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I see some people, they worry about automation removing the need for their job. But the thing is, is that most of those jobs don't have that kind of growth that you're talking about where, you know, with ours, it's all online, it's all processes and stuff. And there's always another level to it. Well, and, and it, there's the difference between whether if automation comes in and takes your job, that's one thing. If you automate your job, that's another yeah. thing, right? Yep, so right. if in, in the first case, yeah, whatever. If you, you don't know, do you're, you're, if you don't do the second one, then the first one's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the other thing is, is that um, you know, and I think a lot of people do this, and it's easy, right? We get comfortable, and then we quit trying. Right. Um, but if you're not consistently learning, then you're not putting yourself in a position where you know, you can move along to something else if something comes up, so. Right, exactly, yeah, yep. Anyway, it's it's super interesting, but yeah, so um, this week, I mean, I've just been wiped out working on this stuff, um, but yeah, I'm hoping to get all that ground out today, and then I can go to these couple of sponsors and just say, because there are a couple of them that are current sponsors that I've been working with, that you know, I've managed to you know, not not in the same way that I messed up with some of these other sponsors, but I haven't delivered to the level that I feel like I promised them. Right. And you know, they're they're generally happy with their sponsorships, but I'm not. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah. And so um, I'm going to go back to them and say, hey, look, you know, I'm going to give you a couple of extra weeks. Here you go. Um, you know, this is now automating everything. So if you need to change any of this stuff. Um, you know, you're good. And then, yeah, from there, just be able to, um, you know, just pull everything together and just hit it and, and make it work. The other thing is, is that if they're generally happy and I give them something better than I feel like, you know, that's more of a win too. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty worn out. I'm looking forward to having a weekend off with like, no expectations other than, uh, do you want to go see a movie with me or do you want to go to dinner first? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how are came, things going for you guys? I just came back from San Francisco. Went to, uh, I did a video shoot with Skillsoft there. I've uh, heard of right. them. I think they keep emailing me and asking me to do courses for them. It could be a different company. Uh, it's probably Skillsoft, right? I mean, Josh, Probably, they do. Yeah. yeah, I think so. They're huge. Yeah. They have, they're bigger than Pluralsight. They're way bigger than Pluralsight. I, yeah. I, which I didn't realize they have 40 million subscribers and 7,000 companies in their, uh, in their customer base. So we did like this whole, <laughs> I basically flew up there on Wednesday morning. Uh, they did like, they had a hair and makeup person and then, I saw they that they did. were going to be doing that, and I was like, yeah. "Holy cow, this is serious!" <laughs> so the makeup person, she's like, "She's like, it's probably you probably think it's kind of weird, like, w like that uh, that I do makeup for for guys." I was like, "No, I'm I'm pretty used to." <laughs> I was like, "I've I've, <laughs> I've I've done this quite a bit." She's like, "Oh, okay." Um, so <laughs> they did. Uh, we did an interview about the book and stuff, so that that went went pretty well, I, I think. And then, so that should be some pretty high quality footage, which we can use too. And then, uh, and then I met up with um, with Ben, who's like running. Someone it just per perfectly ended up working out. So because he's in San Francisco, he wanted to meet up about uh, doing some local groups, like a like a soft skills meetup group uh, in San Francisco, right? And then building essentially building a consultancy arm. Uh, where we'd be able to do in-house consulting, like training for on soft skill stuff. So we had a pretty good meetup, and uh, that looks like something that would be pretty viable. He'd basically run this. He's already has a. He basically has a consultancy practice that he built up from uh, React. So it's called like Real World React, and then mm -hmm. the the people that go to that meetup end up becoming clients that like he, he does tr training or his company does training for. And so we can do the same model for end workshops and, you know, potentially conferences, but we could do the same model with the, uh, with soft skills. The only problem has that we've needed someone that can do this. So we, if we just basically duplicate that model, 
I think as long as we get the traction, it could be really successful, and then that could be like a joint venture. So, so yeah, I haven't had a chance to discuss it with you, John. Yeah, this, I'm hearing all this for the first you. time. So, yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. So he would be like kind of the initial version would be him doing the developing the training and delivering it himself, and then we would. No, I. He'd be like organizing it, putting together okay. the events, like getting all the like all that, mm, and then okay. he'd rely on me to get the first version of the training out and to probably deliver the first like kind of a free workshop. Okay, which is fine. It's easy for me to pop over to San Francisco and and and, get, and do that. So, uh, but then we'd have probably trainers that would be able to do that. Maybe occasionally I'd be coming out to speak at meet up, at the meetup group or mm -hmm. you know or start new ones up in new cities. So. It'd be like Fight Club. It'll be just like Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, I think like and starting in San Francisco makes a lot of sense too because it's such a big hub. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, but yeah. So that was my trip, and then we and then we went back on, and then I came back yesterday. So it was uh, it was good. It was productive. I think so. San Francisco is really interesting. I ended up walking around San Francisco a lot more. <laughs> I get, I have to tell you, like, nothing like, you know, but um, I got hit on by so many gay guys. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was horrible. It was, I, I, I had to put me too on my Twitter profile. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag me too. But no, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite interesting. Just walking down the street, I was like, wow, this is just crazy. But there's a lot of homeless people there, too. Because I, I walked, like, I, I've been to San Francisco plenty of times, but I never really walked around. But I decided, okay, wherever I was going, I was going to walk this time. So to just to get more of the, the lay of the land. But, um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. I saw more than the tourist areas of, of San Francisco. So... Yep. So that's uh, oh, and we got the Kindle Daily deal. What was yes. that? Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah. So Wednesday. Yeah. We've been, we've been, I've been wanting to. This has been driving me crazy since August because yeah. I've been wanting to play with the pricing on the Kindle book, but um, Kindle, like, they're so tricky. I suspect they do this to everybody who launches a book that has any success. But they they emailed us and they said, "Hey, we're considering including you in the Kindle Daily deal." Um, but here's the catch. You have to stay in the Kindle Unlimited program for yeah. the next six months, and you can't change your pricing at all because you'll be ineligible if you do. Mm -hmm. So, like, basically, we've just been sitting on our hands waiting to see. And I was thinking, I was skeptical that they were even going to do it at all. Um, I, I, I kind of thought it was more of a tactic to keep us, uh, to keep us in the program. But they went ahead and did it. Um, without it, they just kind of did it without telling us. So I woke up one morning. And I, I went into KDP and looked at our dashboard, and uh, we had a bar, like, we had our previous day's bars that were about a millimeter high, and then we had, like, yeah. you know, like, four, four inches high um, bar of today's sales. And I was like, oh, something's going on here. Um, and they priced it down, so they priced it down to uh, two ninety nine, down from nine ninety nine, and it was just one day, so... Um, we were, I was very curious to see, so this was a cool experiment because I wanted to see what, all right, so how much, first of all, how much sales can Amazon drive with this mm -hmm. by themselves? So we didn't promote it to our audience at all. It was 100% Amazon's effort. So I wanted to see how much, how many sales could they drive? And then also like coming off of it, what, what would, 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 we, would we have any momentum? Like we'd get a bunch of sales and then like how much momentum would we get when the price goes back up? And would we get more sales the next day? Um, right. And so Amazon, so it ended up, we, we ended up making about, we, I think it was 595 sales at 299. I don't know if they promoted it in email or anything. I know they promoted it on the Kindle Daily Deals page. It, yeah, so, there was an email. I saw the email that went out. Oh, you out, saw the but, email? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they, they promoted it in the email. Um, we sold about 600 copies. And then, when they as like as soon as they dropped the price, boom, sales had gone. Like yeah. we, it was oh, wow. crazy. Yeah, it was crazy because we got up to so we were ranked um, <clears throat> like two hundred and something in the Kindle store, like maybe two fifty or two thirty one or something in the Kindle store yeah. overall, with the number of sales that we made. So when they pulled the plug on the deal, when the price went back up. 
we were still ranked really high, but there was almost zero momentum. We might have sold like an extra five copies because we sold the next yeah. day we sold 17 copies. So we might have sold, and typically for us, a, a normal day is anywhere from 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. Usually more like, well, no, I'm sorry, 10, 10, 10, 10 to 20. 50. Yeah. 10 to, yeah, and, and more, usually more like in the 12, 12 the 10 to 12 range. Right. Um, so yeah, basically the flow, you know, the, the, uh, the momentum of having the visibility from the ranking uh, really didn't do anything for us. And I think, I think the reason is that we're already pretty much ranked near the top of our category. So once you're ranked near the top of your category, it doesn't matter, like you could be ranked number one in the Kindle store, well, probably number one would, would help, but you yeah. could be ranked like number you know 50 in the Kindle store. And if you're number one in all your categories, that's not really gonna get you anything because there's no like there's no you know brownie points for being an overachiever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um so yeah, so that was so yeah, pretty much uh, and it, it also showed us um which I've suspected for a while that the price pricing is pretty much the main driver. Like if we I, I've been wanting to lower our price to four ninety nine just to test it out. And I think if we did that, we probably would at least double our sales. Yeah. And um, it really sales seems volume like volume or sales income. Um, definitely volume, which we want because uh, we want the volume because um, this is a lead magnet, basically. Mm -hmm. Like if if we could get double this for me personally, if we could get double the sales and get the same amount of money, I'd be very happy to do that because it's. You know, right. it's it's a branding it's a branding move, branding a positioning move, move yeah. and yeah. Uh, and a lead generation move. So, but you know, I think somewhere between four ninety nine and nine ninety nine, we can find a price where we're probably making a little bit more money and making a lot more sales at the same time. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that was pretty that was pretty interesting. Um, and that definitely says price. I mean, that's definitely yes. like because if you think about mm -hmm. it, if um, it's not like, I mean, some people open their email the second day too, right? So if something's a Kindle daily deal and it gets blasted out, mm -hmm. you know, a, a decent number of people are going to open up that. I mean, that goes out to like everyone. That's like, yeah. you know, my, my wife is subscribed and she saw it, right? She got right. the email for the Kindle, Kindle daily deal. So that goes out to probably millions of people, honestly. Right. And so if, uh, if, if, if you get it and you open up your email the next day, you're, you know, if you're interested in the book, you're going to buy it anyway, unless the, the price is the the conflict there, right? So, so right. we should have gotten a lot of, you know, yeah. we definitely got more eyes on it, but people must have been saying, oh, the, the price is 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 too high at nine 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 because it should have made. Yeah. I mean, getting that much of an impact should have made that. There should have been a carryover effect. I would have so, expected that we would have seen like fifty sales or a hundred sales, like some some taper off, you know, some kind of taper down from that but no it was just like boom yeah like bottom dropped out so that, i think that's a really good indicator that pricing yep. would definitely move more volume for right. us so we'll have to find and that pricing point so what i've what I, i've done some experiments where i've tried to push sales from my email list or from from our email list yeah. and uh what what typically happens is i so i'll send the email and we don't i don't see any bump in sales like it maybe we sell a couple but it's right. so small that I can't detect the bump. But what I do see is our Kindle Unlimited, like the read for free pages spike. Yeah. When I do a good email that gets good click-throughs, um, I see that jump up. So people oh, are hitting that page. Yeah, people are hitting that page and they're going, well, I don't think I'll buy it, but I'll get, I'll get, I'll try Kindle Unlimited for free. And Amazon's super aggressive. Like they throw a pop-up in your face. When you hit that, any, even if you hit the print, version like if i link to the print version yeah. if you hit that they'll still show you the pop-up that says read this for free with kindle unlimited mm -hmm. so they're super aggressive about that um you're welcome amazon i'm doing a lot of apparently good lead gen for them <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah so we see a i see a, a bit pretty decent jump in our in our page reads on that um so i can basically i can push people to try to check it out and read it for free but i'm it's difficult to right um to actually push Kindle sales at that price. So yeah, so Amazon's just such a, it's such a, I mean, it's it's a commodity market. It's like, you know, there's, you've got the book, your book looks pretty much like a lot of other books and it's hard to, um, and, and they're so, Amazon's so aggressive. Amazon, 
it does what's best for Amazon. So mm -hmm. they yeah. want people to buy something. They don't care at all if they buy your book. They want them to buy something. So they will do everything they can to distract people when they're on your book page. So like with ours, when you go to it and you scroll down, the first thing you see is the self-taught programmer, um, which uh, we go back and forth with on that as, as far as rankings. And it's priced at $4.99. So like people are, I'm sure that I'm selling quite a few copies of that book. Right. Because people hit our page and they scroll down, they're thinking about it, and then they see, oh, this looks interesting. Click, you know, buy. Yep. Um, yeah, so, we'll have to figure out too if we want to get out of the KDP Select uh, you know, yeah. program. Like, yeah. And then also, when we get out of that program, then we can officially distribute it to, like, we can go to Book Baby mm -hmm. and throw it in the other marketplace. I mean, the other marketplaces will probably make up 5% of sales, but yeah. that would be a 5% lift if it is. It might be maybe 10%, you know, and we can throw it out there because we don't have it right. on iTunes. We don't have our iBooks or any of that stuff. Right. So. We, we've got more distribution options there. Does, right. does KDP not allow you to sell it other places? So KDP does, but Kindle on so Kindle Unlimited, um, I believe, used to be called um, KDP Select. K right? Yes, KDP Select. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so it's basically you're you're exclusive to Kindle Unlimited or to Kindle un Unlimited um, that people can read the book for free. You get paid by page reads when they do. Right. Um, and then uh, you're not, yeah you're not allowed to publish in any other marketplace. And they, they do give you the option. Um, we John before we pull it out, we should try a countdown deal. Oh oh, I see. So we can that do... would be pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah you so, can only do that when you're part of the program, right? Yeah. So the countdown deals are cool because you can you can schedule a promotion that's like up to a week long, and. Um, you basically say, all right, well, on day one, I'm going to knock the price all the way down to, I think you can go as low as 99 cents. And yeah. then you can go, it's like a, almost like a penny auction where the next day it goes up. You can have it have multiple price tiers and you can have multiple deadlines. So like, hey, the price is going up to 299 tonight, buy it now. And then yeah. you get, you know, a, you push a ton of traffic. And then when it's going to go up from 299 to 799 or whatever, you do another push and then finally the before it jumps up back up to the regular price um, and it shows a countdown timer it's pretty cool because it shows a countdown timer like it adds scarcity right on Amazon so um, exactly you know, yeah. yeah so we could push we could probably push a bunch of our subscribers to buy it and then um, put you know probably get quite a few buys from Amazon directly if we do that yeah yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's definitely worth doing that to to try out there that and see. And yeah, and if we push it to our list, I think we'll do well with that one. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. Yes. There's there's definitely a lot. It'll be interesting too when we launch the audiobook too, because then we'll have another yes. push. We'll have to figure out the pricing. But ultimately, I think what we need to do is is get pricing down. I think this this Kindle Daily Deal <laughs> basically proves it. And mm -hmm. well, uh, yeah, and yeah. the other thing that we've been seeing so. Uh, We've been trying, we've been experimenting with the price of the print book. So we had the print book. Originally, we launched it in 1999. We we're basically making nothing. And then we raised it to uh, $29.99, and we'd make like seven uh -huh. bucks. And yeah. then we, tr we priced it up to $49.99, and Amazon kept the price at like $27. So we were making like $17 per book or $19 oh, yeah. per book sale. And then um, and Amazon was probably, honestly, probably losing money <laughs> yeah. at that. So they figured that out, of, you know, go figure. Uh, and they jacked our price up to, to from $27 to $34.99, and our sales died. We went from, yeah. like, 10 a day, 10 to 12 a day to basically one, two, three. I think we were averaging three. Like, mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so then Amazon figured out that they weren't selling any books for us, so they lowered it down to twenty nine ninety nine, and our sales jumped up to like seven to ten a day. Right. And then they just last night raised it back up to thirty four ninety nine or something, and our sales are down, <laughs> like basically yeah. dead again. So yeah, it's like basically that twenty nine, tw under twenty, under thirty dollars is definitely there's a break point at thirty dollars. Right. So. We're it's talking funny about how much the price is affecting it, though. It uh, well, pricing on Amazon, it's not surprising to me at all because on 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 in a market like Amazon, 
price is one of the main differentiating yeah. criteria. Like, so it's like um, if you were at like a, a fruit market, right? And there were 10 people selling peaches uh -huh. and only the only difference that you could see in any of them was the price. Like, what are you going to do? I mean, and that's kind of how Amazon is. Like, you know, there's a bunch of books that have that look look interesting for programmers. They have three three hundred reviews. You know, like five yep. star reviews. Like, what are you going to read? Like, so. Actually, um, in my opinion, it's people buying books they're not going to read. But well, that is true. <laughs> That's another problem too, right? Like you assume that people are going to read books, but they're they're not. I mean, there's yeah. yeah so this yep. is, but yeah, but pricing. I, I mean, ultimately, what I what I think we'll need to do is get to the point where. I think we need to look at hiring a possible copy editor to reflow the book, like to uh -huh. convince the, the I, have, I think I have, I have an opinion on that. Okay. Um, so, so I think we should not do that because we have gotten there in the reviews. There is a uh -huh. lot, a lot of positive feedback on the way that the book at um, both the way the book, this tone of the book and like the, but also the way that it the the way that it reads like people really really like that so yeah but i don't know if it'll it'll make as much of it like i mean i think we could look and see what it looks like and what it costs and how much we could actually reduce the page count maybe there's other ways we could reduce the page count as well but if we could cut the page count in half and then we and run our own print run with a with the printer we could probably drop our our costs by half and if yeah. we drop our cost by half, drop the price in half, that will make a huge, huge difference in sales. Yeah. I don't right. think that I don't think that reformatting it would cut it down more than twenty five percent. Uh I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of white space. There's a lot of uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to think also like let me Because we have the way it's formatted right now is is we have instead of paragraphs, we have instead of indenting paragraphs, we have uh, carriage return. So it's like mm. White yeah space after every paragraph but the paragraphs are really short too so i mean yeah, if i look at it compared to soft skills and there's double it's doubly spaced white space between them so you know the bleed on the page isn't very full like we, there's definitely some stuff that could be done with the margins i mean yeah i don't know there's i mean what we i guess the first step would be to just go to a, a printer and just say hey Here's the book. Here's the PDF. What would you charge to print this? Yeah. Right. Yep. And see yep. how much cheaper we could get it from Am down from Amazon if we just did our own right. print run. And if we if yep. we can do that and that's sufficient, then you know otherwise we could yeah. we could talk about. Yep. There's other options too. Another option that I thought about too is to take the book, break it into three books, like we had talked about before: beginner, like intermediate. Mm -hmm advanced and we could still sell the complete book but we could also sell you know smaller booklets that would be yeah uh, books uh, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot, a lot of things but but if we can get pricing down that's i think that's that's key to moving a lot of volume right yep so yeah so that was exciting this week and surprising um and then the other thing so we had another exciting thing happen which was um my we did um, the affiliate uh, promotion for Interview Cake. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, <clears throat> we decided, like I decided, uh, so <laughs> the story on, I've been planning to, to work with Parker, so Parker from Interview Cake, I met him at MicroConf, um, and I've been planning to work with him on this for like six or eight months, and we've been going back and forth, and 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 I it got kept getting put off because of the book. And finally, like, um, finally he emailed me and basically said, Hey, are we going to, do we decide to can this? And I was like, no, I, I felt all guilty. So I was like, I'm, I'm just going to do it. And I've been writing daily emails for, for simple programmer now. See so. that email works. The, yes. Are you yeah. Gonna quit? Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, it was exactly, yeah. He didn't quite use the same verbiage, yeah. but it was, it was like, yeah, it was the, have you given up on this idea? And I was like, so ashamed, you know, I was, I basically was guilted into doing it. So it's I sat take down. Away. It's a takeaway. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so I sat down um, and just blasted out. Last week I just blasted out seven emails, um, put put them together. Ended up being about five thousand words of copy. Um, John did a video where he demoed Interview Cake and like was all you know enthusiastic about it because we really like mm -hmm. we really like this product. It's it's um it's pretty awesome. 
And uh, well, it goes nicely with your other stuff too. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it, and it's cool because it's like a it's like a software tool that teaches you. So it's a little different. It's not your typical. You know, it's not just like a straight up video course. It's, right. It's got the I, the software packaging makes it feel more valuable, I think, than if it was just like you could do the same basic thing in a book, but this just yeah. feels so much more valuable. So, um, yeah. So I got I, I Parker gave me a fifty percent off discount code, um, and then so I basically just um, uh, wrote wrote up the seven emails and we scheduled. So it was uh, two emails on Mon on Tuesday, one email on Wednesday, and four emails yesterday. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's basically like, okay, if we're going to treat this like a product launch or like a sale for our own product, that's how I'm going to do it. Like this is going to be all out, you know. Right. If this is if affiliates, if affiliate marketing is ever going to work for us, this is going to be how this is what we need to do. So, um, so the e the first yeah, so the um, email started to go out, and uh, <clears throat> we as of right now, like as of as of last night, we had sold. Um, two hundred. What was it, John? Like two hundred and fifty seats already? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we. Pro I think it was two hundred and forty seats. Which, yeah, it was like um. Uh, so at a hundred dollars a pop, so that's about twenty four thousand dollars in business that we drove, and then that was before the last batch of emails went out last night. The last two sets of emails went out. So, um, altogether, uh, the uh, the emails drove like over. 40 almost 4300 clicks so we're, i'm thinking we're going to be well over like 3000 or 3 uh 300 sales there's like $30,000 worth of sales from this campaign um and then we get a cut of that so uh, it's cuz affiliate commission mm -hmm. uh, so yeah i really needed <laughs> i needed a win <laughs> so yes. um this was a big yeah this was awesome this was a big win um yeah, and this also makes it like, I mean, we're gonna have a lot of of street cred from this, right? And yes. and, and cred with yes. with well, Parker and and Interview Kick. Yep. So they're gonna be. I mean, when someone drives you thirty thousand dollars worth of business, uh, yes. you, you you tend to like want to do more business with that person, right? Right. right. So, right. Yeah, I was I was actually last night. My I I did not. I only slept three hours last night because I could. My brain was just churning. Yeah. Um, thinking of all the stuff, but. One idea that I have is, um, I, so I've been listening to some interviews about Gene Schwartz, who wrote Breakthrough Advertising. He was a, uh -huh. he's a copywriter, and he never charged money for his copy. What he did is he, he'd write the copy for free, and then he'd say, I want the names of the buyers from this offer. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so he built his own list, and he had his own company selling products, and that's how he made all his money. And yeah. it worked really, really, really well for him. Um, and I was thinking about like how could I possibly apply this for what we're doing. And I'm thinking that one option here will be um, I can I can take this now that we've got this big win. I'm thinking, John, I could take this out to, and I haven't talked to John about this either yet. So, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I'm thinking that I could take this out and go like to Java Code Geeks, right, uh, and say, mm -hmm. hey. I will work with you on. The, we'll work with you on this to do this affiliate promotion. Here's what it's going to look like. You're going to send seven emails in three days, right? And they are going. The emails are going to be basically the same as what we're sending now. Which so it's a proven campaign. But instead of instead of selling the product, we're going to drive one click opt-ins to our list. Then once they get on our list. I'll switch to selling them the product directly and offering the discount. So it's like basically, hey, we've got this deal going right now. There's this great discount. There's this awesome product, great discount. You have to opt into this list, and I'll I'll send you the discount code. Right. Okay. Basically yeah. Like I do with what I did with King Sumo back in the day. Mm -hmm. Right. So so that way we're driving we're driving all that traffic onto our list, and then when they hit our list, they'll just pick up whatever emails in the sequence are left that they haven't gotten yet. Th they'll get from me, but they'll be um, they'll be selling the product directly now. If that makes sense, so it's like the sequence will actually continue, but the call to action will change. Right, right. Um, so and, and and then we could split the commissions. Like I'm gonna I'm actually gonna talk to Java Code Geeks about this. Like we could split the commissions with them um, off because it would be 
it would be probably ex too expensive for us to do seven emails to them to their list um, to, to 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 sell interview cake with with what we're making off of it. But if we split the commissions with them, then um, you know then we could potentially partner up and and run this run this exact same campaign um, to their list and. Right. I was thinking, oh, yeah. you know, and there's like a bunch. Of, there's a. I have some relationships now, like SitePoint um, might be interested in doing. Might be able to do something with them around this. So yeah, I was just like, my brain was just like working overtime last night thinking about all this stuff. Yeah, I like that idea. You, you leverage all the work that you've already done, and then exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's a way that we can do. We can do like um, we can basically kind of we can do a little bit of. Um, it's almost like we could do a little bit of consulting work, but mm -hmm. what it would be is that um, once they, well, if we test this out and it works on their list, we can rerun it. So right. it's like it's like we can basically license the campaign. So we could take my copywriting skills and basically license out some of that work to other audiences and build our list at the same time, <laughs> make yeah. money off of it, and build our list at the same time. So it's like we'd be getting compound interest on it. So. Right. We'll have to see um, if they're if if they're going to want to go for it. But uh. the other possibility too that I was thinking with this whole thing is to get the interview cake guys to do like a a course, a, a bigger package or like a follow up, but have yeah. another product to sell that yes. you know we can still have our our people because they're that we're we're tagged yes. through affiliates. Right, and then we can send more mm -hmm. people to that as well. Yes, so. yeah, they need to do. They need to have a course, and they need to have a. Um, they need a continuity program for this. Like yeah, it's just crying. It's just begging for a continuity piece on exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was that's been that was pretty pretty exciting. So I, I've been so I, I looked at the uh, so far. Well, this will go up a little bit. So, but so far I sent uh, fifty two like fifty three thousand people got seven emails, and we got a total of. Uh, three hundred and fifty unsubscribes. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. yeah. So I was expecting like I was expecting a lot of angry. We John, we didn't get any angry replies either. Like nobody, nobody said, "Why are you sending me seven emails?" <laughs> I would because yeah, um, yeah. I've been uh, I have access to the John at Simple Programmer email address, so I, I go in there and I was checking it out, and I was like, "Wow!" I was expecting to get hate, and we didn't get anything. So. Um, people, yeah, the emails were pretty fun. I mean, like the, I wrote two of the emails that went out yesterday were like a big long stories about John's interview at Microsoft, which was <laughs> nice. a disaster, and that was just a, a blast to write about. So, so they were they were fun. They weren't uh, they weren't just sales emails, but but yeah, it worked for it. So it went really well. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a. Plinko machine of affiliate offers. Yeah. So I want to have nice. a separate Plinko machine where, like, after people finish going through all of our stuff, I'm going to start like so the 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 interview cake thing. I'll probably offer that you know once a month to anyone who nobody. So in the emails, I said you're never going to see this offer again. So everyone's tagged. They're not going to get the offer again. But right. anybody new coming in will. Uh, We'll get that, and we can run that once a month, and uh, just um, that way we can we can kind of reuse the reuse the work on it. Yeah, nice. Um, but yeah, we'll probably we can probably do we can probably do any at least eight to ten thousand dollars in business a quarter with interview cake. Um, send them eight to ten thousand in business per quarter based on our current like sign up rates and everything. So yeah. So that will yeah. that will be profitable long term. Yeah, we'll but, have to figure out the order of Plinko, like because based on just what are the most profitable promotions, like we want to front load those mm -hmm. before because it you have so much time before someone may unsubscribe or like lose interest. So, well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, like they, uh, we do have a pretty we have we have a lot of people who have been with us for five years. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I was I did a, I did a ton of poking around this week with 
in the um, drip database and like slicing it different ways. And uh, we so like we have about um, sixty three thousand active subscribers, and then about as many um, inactive. Right. Yeah. So like unsubscribed. So we basically half of our over the last five years, half of our list has unsubscribed. Um, but you know we're um, it, the uh, with the daily emails that I've been doing, the, all of the engagement metrics are going up, and the um, so we're, we're like we're hitting more people every week, and the customer lifetime value is also increasing. So, yeah, increasing steadily on that. So, yeah, I'd I'd really like to get something like that together where it's here here's some value, and you know if they're not interested in the topic, then they can just opt out, and the next week they get something else. There's no off switch on my crazy train. <laughs> okay, so they just they get all the emails, period? Yeah, pretty much. The off switch is, my, well, some of them you can opt out of, yeah. But the, the only thing is if you opt out of one of my email courses, then you are it's out of the frying pan into the fire. You're going to get my daily emails at that point. So right. the, only, the only way out is, uh, is to just pull the plug. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense though. You should just keep on selling until you can't sell anymore. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, and if they're not going to buy, then there's no value in having them on your list. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So we. So one thing I did was, um, I. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know why I got in. Why I decided to do this, but I was like, I wonder if I can. Oh no, I know what it was. Okay. So I, I'm kind of wanting to try doing a crazy fire sale price to some countries that are where the incomes are just lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had this idea for a while because when we did when we did the JavaScript launch pad thing, we did we did that nine dollar sale at the end. And most of the people who bought at that price had never bought anything from us before. Yeah. So I was like, interesting. Okay. So I bet a lot of those people are from countries where like, you know, they just can't afford a hundred dollars for a product. Mm -hmm. So I spent way too much time trying to figure out how I could slice up in drip um, by geography. So Rob, if you're listening, I put in a tick of a support request for a feature to like let you uh, let you segment your list by continent. Um, because like if you go in there, all all you can do is select time zones, and the time zones it's like not obvious from the time zones what country it is you can you can actually break it out like there's because I mean like I don't know like Brazil and and Missouri I might be in the same time zone but there's a there's a different name for it so like they're all UTC minus four mm -hmm. but there's different time zones because they're on different continents so what I did was I exported everybody for the, on our list into Excel and then I took the the time zone field and I copied it to a custom field called region and then I went okay now everybody with a region that matches America slash New York you know uh, America slash Montreal that mm -hmm. they all go in the US and Canada bucket and then I have so I have now I have um, Asia Asia and Pacific US and Canada Latin America Africa and Australia and I was able to look at the customer values and it was actually pretty crazy so um, we have, so of, of our U.S. demographic, 15% of our subscribers are customers, which blew my mind. That wow. that's really that's high. A lot. And the average, the average, um, yeah, like every subscriber from the U.S. is worth about fifteen dollars. And then we go over to Asia, and only three percent of our subscribers are customers, mm -hmm. and they're only worth like our subscribers are only worth three dollars. So if we can offer some pricing for them that is more in line with their incomes, we can probably get that 3% of customers up to 10 or 12%. And then like that's a big chunk of income that we're not getting right now. So um, yeah, so I, uh, that, that – um, and it also gives me an idea like, okay, like Latin America, I know now those subscribers are worth about 6 bucks, And I'll bet you – like I'm thinking I could probably get – Facebook traffic that is really cheap to Latin America, and we could kill it with Latin America. We could basically oh, yeah. be the only 
like how many, I mean, how many US companies are advertising in Brazil? But we, we get a lot of customers from Brazil, so mm -hmm. we can, you know, we could potentially, um, you know, get really dirt cheap traffic there and, uh, and know that we're going to make sales off of it. So, yeah, so I don't know. I was geeking out with data this week. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. It was it was really surprising. The the yeah, I was not expect. I thought so across our whole list. Um, I knew that our customer like our average like per subscriber value is about seven dollars. So I've had mm -hmm. that in my mind every time we're buying ads or price you know anything like that. I'm like okay seven bucks. I know that at least if I can get them for less than seven bucks, I'm in pretty good shape. But in the U.S., it's actually fifteen dollars. So we have a lot more room there. Um, you know, a lot more room uh, to buy cut to buy subscribers than I even realized. As long as we can verify their performance is yes. the same when yes. we get them from that. Yeah, exactly. Source. But yeah, but even if they're half is yeah, yeah. Even if we're still... paying three dollars per subscriber and they are half as good as a regular subscriber, we're still only looking at like six or seven dollars, and that's right. still. Yeah well under that 15 so yeah. and the aussies on our list are the they're the stars like they are they are the most valuable they buy the most but we only have like 800 of them so because <laughs> walking around upside down makes all the blood rush to their brains that's so right yeah they're more susceptible to my my uh my direct marketing pitches yeah yeah so yeah we'll have to uh we'll have to try that out and see how that works but yep. but yeah, we have to up the Facebook ads, obviously. If that's like if we can yeah confirm that so yep yeah I agree that's interesting. Knowing your numbers, right? Yeah. Yes, it is so so hard. Good yeah, grief! I mean, I probably spent four hours on that, like figuring out because drip if drip had, like Mailchimp makes it really easy. Like there's a you can just you can just geographically segment, but drip does not, and uh, so. I had to figure out the hack with uh, originally I was trying to like just go in and make a segment which with, with all the time zones so it was like time zone New York time zone Montreal like um but then I realized that some of them like it, the names weren't even it wasn't even clear like where they were mm -hmm. so it wasn't just wasn't really possible but interesting yep all right so. should we one, one thing I wanted to ask you guys real quick is yeah. uh, microconf next year. I think the tickets are going this on year. sale soon. You know what? Um, why do they make it uh, end on Easter or go during Easter? Oh, is it Easter weekend? Yeah. That's that. the only thing is like. Because if it runs over Easter, I can't go. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure that I can go if it runs over Easter. I mean, that's. I was be, planning like, to. I was not really planning to go, actually. So, and if it runs over Easter, that's like 100 percent. Punch it. Punch see, it says room. it's. Come on, you can do it. Uh, April 29th through May 1st. And isn't. When is Easter next year? <laughs> this Easter's year. Easter's April 1st. Oh. April 1st, right? Oh, wait, oh, April 1st. I was thinking May. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's fine then. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I was, well, for some reason I had, I must have the wrong month. Okay, it's not a, not a problem then. I, I'm I'm definitely planning on on going. I always get good, um, get, get like, yeah. it's, it's always good. I always get good feedback and stuff and make good connections, so. Yeah, I have to say that this year I'm kind of tempted to um, go for the starter edition as well. Not not necessarily to the sessions, but more for the um, see if I can get a ticket to the like the um, the evening events. Oh yeah, just see if I can buy just the plus one, like I'd be my own plus one. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just snuck into the evening events last time for the you starter. Did for the starter. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Rob let me in, or, or or someone let me in. Maybe yeah. it was, you know. Well, maybe they just look and see. Oh, you have a badge on, and they let you in. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm thinking about that just because it. 
I like interacting with folks, and I think I could, uh, especially since I think PodWrench is going to be to the point where I can actually find people to talk to there about it. Yeah. And um, but the growth <laughs> is really where I think the the one that I need to be in. I'm not going to buy a ticket to both. So, but then I can go make connections and things like that, which is the other part of the value. So. Yeah, I'm not planning on going. Slacker. Yeah. All right, should we do our thoughts for the week? Yeah. I need sleep. That's my thought. <laughs> <sighs> you know what? I mean, I, I, I swear I say the same, the same variation on the same things every week, but you know what? Things get tough. You just got to suck it up and do it. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> you know, sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a break this weekend, but, you know, I'm going to come back and hit it harder on Monday. And you just you just do what you got to do. Deep thoughts from Chuck. There you go. <laughs> do what you got to do. Let's see, I'll say that, um, that you're – you don't realize what your limiting beliefs are, right? Until you break through them or you see someone doing something mm -hmm. that you thought was impossible. And then you, and I might've said this before in another <laughs> program or as I can't remember, but uh, once you do that, then what was impossible actually moves to the zone of not just possible, but easy <laughs> and natural. And mm -hmm. so it, it's kind of interesting. Just, uh, I kind of, had a bit of that experience this week and just seeing that like things that I didn't believe were possible were are very not not just possible like it's like well just I, I guess you know I've, I've talked to different people that have different total reality sets right and so mm -hmm. you can see you know when you know something's possible that someone else doesn't or just like how easy it is mm -hmm. and and you talk to that person it's like they're like they have no idea they're you know their their perspective is that this isn't even possible. There's excuses. There's reasons why it can't work for them, or or whatnot. And then you you realize that like, oh, this like I must still have this perception, or this was me, mm -hmm. and I still have this perception in some areas, right? So I think it's just and and how do you figure out how do you get out of that zone? Uh, you you find someone who's doing something that you think is the unbelievable or impossible and you watch them do it right it's it's like that the whole tony robbins modeling approach where you look for a model to emulate and and see them them doing it and so i think that's just a really valuable thing like it's it can really accelerate your learning in life is if you can do that it's like you know justin bannister breaking a four minute mile right it's like mm -hmm. once you you know once you've seen it happen once you know it's possible then you can make it happen yourself. Yep. So. Yeah. Cool. My goal. And so I'm uh, going to take notes every time we do a thought for the week. Every time John has a thought, because I'm going to just redo an email about it from now on. <laughs> there it's, you go. It's like nice. it's like yeah, because because the one of the things that it's a little bit challenging sometimes is I don't have. I like to write the emails with like this happened to me this week kind of stories. And I don't have, like when I'm writing for John, I don't have that because I don't know what's happening to him day in and day out. Um, so I get a little glimpse of that on during thoughts. So, <laughs> um, so I think for me, uh, so um, in the, the, uh, the gymnastics program that I'm doing, the strength training program, the coach, uh, Coach Summer has a saying that he says a lot, which is um, consistency, Consistency trumps intensity. Um, and uh, so like I've been I'm, I've been wanting to get really consistent and start doing these these email doing emails every day for simple programmer. And I realized that um, one of the one of the things that was holding me back a little bit was my the intensity level. Like I was trying to I was I had gotten into the habit of writing longer emails that were like 500 words plus and it was pretty daunting. So I'm setting a 250 word limit for myself. And I'm trying to stick to that, and it's just it's forcing me to kind of tighten tighten things down, focus a little bit better. But it's it's shorter, and like uh, today, I think I wrote one in like 12 minutes, 
So the intensity is lower, but I'm doing it, you know, by doing it day in and day out, um, the, the long-term like effect of it with the audience is much, much greater than if I were to do, you know, longer ones, but not hit it as consistently. So mm -hmm. True. consistency yeah. is more important than intensity. Yep. All right, guys. Well, that uh, wraps up. I'm going to have a potential meeting with uh, someone who might be joining us in a little bit here. So, Oh, cool. All right, Very cool. Sounds good. All right. All righty. See you See next, guys week. next week. Yep. See you. Want to start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to John, Josh, and Derek as we figure it out. We are the entrepreneur programmers, and we'll teach you straight up to be.